Welcome back everyone, this is Dave from Cormac Productions, here to talk about the latest episode of This Is Us, Season 5, Episode 3, Titled Changes. Now I will say, once again, that this is not a spoiler free video, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, I highly recommend that you go and do so. This episode was definitely not as good as the premiere, but that was pretty much to be expected. My main problem with it is that it was definitely overstuffed. There was too much going on, too much story trying to be told. And at times it felt a bit disjointed. It kind of reminds me of episode 10 from last season, Light and Shadows, that had the same issues. Which was also an episode that featured the formerly preteen cast. And speaking of the preteens, who are now teenagers, oh my god. I went on at length during an episode last year where I said that they were borderline not able to use these actors anymore because they were just getting too big. Well, in this episode, they're there. It's pretty much no longer believable that these teens are going to grow into being the older teen cast. And Mackenzie... Hansi Sack, who plays Kate? Whoo! Wow! She totally changed. She doesn't look anything like she used to. Even last season, she looked different from. So much so that there were quite a few people who thought it was a different actress. No, it's the same actress. She just slimmed out and got taller. So, they are no longer believable as the younger counterparts of the adult characters. But nevertheless, we're using them and we're probably going to continue to do so. But their stories in this episode suffered from the exact thing I started to talk about at the beginning, which is the overstuffed nature of the episode. The Kate and Stuart plotline I don't particularly care about, Neither really did I care about Kevin's story, but it at least tied into the adult character's story throughout the episode. The story that really should have gotten more time here was Randall and Kate's friend, which really, really suffered from not having enough time dedicated to it. Kate's friend, who is supposed to be helping Kate on her project with Stuart is hanging out with Randall and eventually tries to kiss him. Which probably would have happened if she hadn't said that she had always wanted to kiss somebody like him. Which could mean other things than what the way Randall takes it, but most likely not. This would have worked better as a, an affecting story if they had shown the two of them actually bonding and maybe there seeming promise between the two of them. As it stands, Randall for most of the episode, most of his thread during this, just seems annoyed by her until she gets ready to kiss him. This actually plays in rather nicely with the premiere. And in my view, the young Randall doesn't end up talking to his mom about it because she would likely have the same reaction that a lot of people were having. That she could have meant something else. And Randall knows better and didn't want to have that conversation or argument with his mother. So he just ended up swallowing it down into the pit where the rest of his unresolved emotional issues got buried. After we get past the first preteen teenager scenes we have a scene with Randall looking for a therapist via Zoom now if I were going to alter this episode this would probably be the thread that I take out not because it's bad per se but we had quite a bit of Randall in the season premiere and maybe we could just move his storyline to the next episode after this one giving more focus to Kate and Toby and Kevin and Madison. And then maybe move the Randall 
the teen storyline, also into that same episode. One therapist brings up cognitive behavioral therapy and CPT, which stands for cognitive processing therapy. Now, I've known of cognitive behavioral therapy. I brought it up in a couple of videos, but I haven't yet heard of CPT. According to APA.org, CBT is a specific type of cognitive behavioral therapy that helps patients learn how to modify and challenge unhelpful beliefs related to trauma. Randall's thread almost isn't even really about him. It changes pretty much into a Tess storyline. Eris Baker, who plays Tess, doesn't get much material on this show. But when she does get material, she shines. We'll talk more about that thread in a moment. Beth is making pancakes, and this is the first of two scenes in which pancakes are made and pancakes are actually refused. I personally would never refuse pancakes, but that might be why I look more like myself and less like Kevin. She tells the ungrateful and uninterested teenagers, they really don't tell you how rewarding it is being a parent, especially the teenagers. That's not something that's talked about nearly enough. That she put her foot in it. A phrase that is repeated twice within the scene and it is not a phrase that I was familiar with. So being me and all, I looked it up. According to the Urban Dictionary, when someone says you put your foot in it, that means you know how to cook whatever it is well. A poster on the This Is Us Previously TV forum expanded on this further. It apparently comes from the movie Grease. Blanche writes, in the scene where they are about to uh, sing Summer Loving, the T-Birds are making fun of the football players, especially Tom Chisholm, played by Lorenzo Lamas. I didn't know that. When he accidentally steps on his helmet and gets it stuck on his foot, Sony yells, Yeah, you really put your foot into it this time, Chisholm. So for those who are listening to this, or watching this, however you want to phrase it, and did not know what that meant, you are welcome. And this is officially more time on this particular subject than I thought I would be spending. Randall talks to Beth about finding a young father to be his therapist that he really connected with. He brings up transracial identity, which is something that I once again had to look up. According to Wikipedia, Transracial identity is having a racial identity or racial expression that differs from one's race assigned at birth. I'm not quite sure that fits. I might be wrong, but I don't think that quite fits Randall's situation. I think if anything, it's more like transracial adoption, which is placing a child of one racial or ethnic group with adopted parents of another racial or ethnic group. But I'm not quite an expert, so I could be wrong. We get the first Madison and Kevin scene of the episode, which is awkward, and some people complain that it was forced, but that's kind of the point. There is nothing about this courtship that is in any way normal. This is two people trying to make the best of the situation. Kevin comes in from working out, and Madison asks him how often is he actually working out under the guise of pretending to learn about Kevin. But there's a little bit more to that. She is making pancakes for the second scene in a row. Well, cowrie pancakes, no less. Kevin finds out that he got a part playing a lawyer and decides at that moment that he needs to basically not eat anything other than water and chicken breasts. He does not eat the pancakes. He gets a call from his agent 
and then disappears from the scene, promising that he will make her dinner. Madison does not look happy, and you know what? Neither am I. Those two little pancakes would, would have hurt you to eat, Kevin? Come on! You know what, Madison? If you want to send me those pancakes, I will totally eat them. Because as I've already mentioned, I do not refuse pancakes. Ever. We get to the Toby and Kate scene. And this was the thread that I was most concerned about going into this episode. Now, as many of you know, I am not always thrilled with the stories that these two get. And especially didn't like it last year. They earned quite a bit of goodwill in the season premiere with these two characters. And I had hoped that it would continue into this episode and indeed this season. And much to my surprise, they did not squander that goodwill. They came off very well during this thread. My problem here is once again that their story was just not given enough time. I was also worried that they would go the cliched route of having the birth mother at the last minute change their mind. That didn't happen. I was very surprised when this episode concluded and that did not happen. But if you're going to go ahead and do it in the next episode, well that's still not impressive. And the preview for next week suggests that might actually happen. But we'll see. Kate and Toby are waiting to meet the, uh, the birth mother. And they're arguing about which mask. Well, they're not really arguing, but they're discussing which mask Kate should wear. Toby Nix is one of them, thinking it'll give off the wrong vibe. And right then, the birth mother surprises them. So Kate ends up throwing on the mask that Toby just vetoed as being the wrong vibe. And the birth mother loves it. Absolutely adorable. That absolutely, that made me smile. I'm not going to lie. Later, Toby and Kate are arguing because they don't have enough diapers. And it's not really an argument. It's just a typical couple bickering that occurs. And you would think that they would try a little harder to look impressive to the new birth mother. But they definitely don't do that in this scene. But hey, at least you can't say they aren't themselves. And it doesn't seem to be hurting them any with the birth mother. Who, by the way, has a Ghostbusters ringtone. And that totally won me over. We get another Kevin and Madison scene who are along for a walk. Madison is clearly upset and Kevin picks up on it. He wrongly assumes that it's because of a love scene that he's going to have to film in the movie. And he keeps trying to reassure her that it's not a big deal, that it's, it's the least sexy thing that could happen. But Madison keeps insisting that it's not about the love scene. A fan interrupts their walk, a fan of Kevin's for the record, I mean, maybe it could be a Madison fan, I'm a Madison fan, but in this case, the fan is a fan of Kevin. She takes note of Madison's state of being pregnant, and I have to wonder, is Madison so noticeably pregnant here that it's worth taking the risk of pointing it out and being wrong? I mean, I certainly wouldn't say anything because I'm, I'm just not the guy that's going to take that type of chance. Also, this kind of made me wonder, Kevin is famous. So at this point, Madison should also be in the news, the tabloids, and have her picture being taken and this and that. But maybe with COVID, that would be less intense. Still, I'm curious if that ends up impacting Madison's life at all. Kevin obliges the selfie, the socially distanced selfie, and Madison decides to keep on going. Kevin chases after her, and she finally reveals some of what's bothering her. 
She was in fact upset about the pancakes. And Kevin, so am I if you care. I may or may not forgive you for that. She was also upset that the fan could notice that she was pregnant. And many other things that she's not comfortable talking about because they are basically strangers. Madison takes off her home and tells Kevin not to follow. Says that he is also going home. She tells him to take a different route. She leaves a very confused Kevin behind. 20 minutes into the episode, we finally get into the Tess storyline, which apparently a year ago, she had made a video with her friend about a teacher who liked to play with Tess's hair and other black students, and her friend who was constantly misgendered by the said teacher. Now, the gender identity thing is not something I know a whole lot about. I haven't really encountered it. I know a little about it, but not very much. I haven't had the need to really look into it. But you would think, as a teacher who teaches young students, that you would make some effort to understand the culture in which your students currently live. If there are any teachers who are listening to this video, uh, would like to throw their two cents in and give their input, I would be more than happy to listen to your opinion. Now the touching of the hair thing, I don't get at all. I don't know why anybody would do that. But apparently it's a thing that actually happens. So this video has these two girls basically saying, screw you to their teacher. Randall has queer doubts about how he's supposed to be feeling. He's got the serious dad face on, and there's no real indication that he's conflicted, but I kind of feel it on him. And maybe that's because I don't really know how I'd, I would react to this video. I'd kind of be a little bit impressed by the talent on display and video evidence of her coming into her own. Now, this is clearly not a good idea. This video was not a good idea for a couple of reasons. Some have pointed out that it's disrespectful. My personal feeling is that if you make a video like this and then you post it, you're going to get in trouble. If you're a kid, you're going to get in trouble with the school. If you're an adult, you post something like this, and your company is likely going to fire you. So really, it's just ill-advised. The next time we check in with Randall and Beth, Randall is expressing that as a parent, he knows that Beth is right that she did not express herself the right way and all the issues that come with making this video but she can't he cannot help but be a little bit proud of her she is expressing herself in a way that Randall wouldn't have he had been worried always that Tess was going to end up like him swallowing all his feelings and eventually becoming an anxiety riddled person. A fear that was borne out when she started having a panic attacks during last season. But this Tess, this version of her, will not experience those issues. She will not have to find herself when she's 40 years old in therapy. And Randall says this with some disdain for himself, but he really shouldn't because Okay, Randall, you're finding yourself now at 40, but some people never do it. I relate a lot to what Randall is saying here, and what Kevin will also later say in the episode. That he's worried that he's going to pass down his issues to his kid. And that's the same thing that I worry about with my daughter. That I'm going to hand down my unhealthy patterns to her. That I'm going to give her 
the anxiety that I carry and the depression. And that's just for starters for the issues that I have. I would rather Julia not inherit that. I would rather her be better than me. But nevertheless, Randall is a parent. Beth says that they need to have a united front on this issue. And Randall does what basically Beth tells him to. If Julia did something like this, I honestly have no idea how I would react. More than likely, like Randall, I would take my cues from her mother. In punishment, they take away her phone and ground her. Though Randall delivers this uh, sentencing without ever taking her phone, which more than a few people pointed out. Next we see of Madison and Kevin. Kevin is trying to apologize in the kitchen, but Madison waves him off, saying that he did nothing wrong. Kevin is still trying to take the blame, thinking it was something that he said, but again Madison tells him that it's not. She had an eating disorder that he isn't sure that he knows about. She has an ultrasound on the fridge to remind her to eat so that their babies will be strong. She tells her story, and Kevin listens, empathetically. After she's done, Madison takes off, still kind of upset. Not at Kevin so much. Kevin looks like he wants to say something, but she takes off before he can. I thought I was done discussing Toby and Kate, but there was actually one more scene I wanted to talk about. She's calling for positivity and looking on the bright side and expecting the best. Where Toby wants her to join him in his utter terror. And Kate obliges, expressing a concern. And Toby thanks her for expressing an appropriate amount of terror. And then he changes his tune and becomes optimistic. And this is an absolutely charming scene. I hope these characters stay like this throughout the season. Madison finds Kevin in the garage, and he talks about the fact that he's going to be playing a trial lawyer. He asks, why does a trial lawyer need to be ripped? Now I'm kind of curious about something. Is Kevin exercising and trying to maintain a good bod, something that the studio and the movie itself is requiring, or is that something that Kevin is putting on himself? He tells her that he too has issues, that he also counts calories, which is why he didn't eat the pancakes, despite the fact that they were low calorie pancakes. He mentions that not drinking because he's an alcoholic he's channeling all of his energy into his other addiction which is weightlifting and exercising and that's not any healthier it's implied or at least i see it i'm not sure if that's actually what they were trying to say that lifting weights was one way to spend time with his dad like randall He's worried about passing his issues down to his kids. The reason he tells her all this is to let her know that he has issues too. He has daddy issues, he has issues with his body, and with his brother that he still has to work out. And by God, I think these two crazy kids have a chance. They seem to be doing all the right things as far as building a relationship. And I think that about does it for the things I have to talk about for this episode. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time for the next episode. This is Dave from Cormant Productions, signing off.